Lesson 27, Jesus Condemned and Crucified In today's lesson, we come to the climax of Jesus' mission in this world. He came to die for our sins, and we shall see how God used the hands of wicked men to fulfill his purpose by allowing his beloved son Jesus to suffer and die in our place. We can only briefly reflect upon this chapter in today's lesson, but I would encourage you to take time to consider and ponder the great things your God has done for you when he sent his Son to suffer and die for your sins. In the last chapter we saw how the Jewish authorities were determined to put Jesus to death, accusing him of blaspheming. Now we find them taking Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor, hoping they can get him to do their dirty work of killing an innocent man. Again, we meet Judas, who realizing that he had betrayed innocent blood, takes the money back to the chief priests and offers it back to them. But it was too late. The betrayal had been committed, and when they did not take the money back, Judas threw it down before them and went out and hanged himself. The priest used the money to buy a field to bury strangers. The lesson of Judas is that those who betray great privilege will have the greatest guilt of all. When Pilate questioned Jesus, he found no fault in him and wanted to release him, but the Jews kept shouting for his blood. Again and again Pilate tried to settle the crowd and to release Jesus. But the people were determined to have Jesus put to death. Pilate was even warned by his wife because she had suffered in a dream about Jesus. He thought if he offered to release one prisoner, given the choice between Barabbas, a notorious murderer, and Jesus, that the Jews would relent and let Jesus go free rather than a murderer. But still they insisted that Jesus be put to death. At last, Pilate ordered Jesus to be scourged, thinking if they saw him beaten badly, that perhaps they would be satisfied with this. But they still desired to see him crucified. Pilate then gave in to their cries and sentenced Jesus to be crucified. When they crucified Jesus, everything happened just as the prophets had foretold centuries earlier. The soldiers gambled for his clothes, and he was nailed to a cross by his hands and feet, and they offered him sour wine with gall. All these things had been prophesied about him. Darkness covered this scene, and Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? indicating his sufferings were those foretold in Psalm 22, where this same cry is recorded. After several hours of agony upon the cross, they offered him some sour wine to drink, and after this he yielded up his spirit. Upon his death, the curtain inside the temple was torn from top to bottom. There was an earthquake, and many graves were opened. These signs caused the centurion and others with him to say, Truly this was the Son of God. Some of the women who had ministered to him were watching from a distance. Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take the body of Jesus and bury him, and Pilate granted him permission. Joseph wrapped the body in clean linen cloths and laid the body in his own new tomb, which was nearby. He rolled a stone over the entrance of the tomb. The chief priest asked Pilate to send troops to guard the tomb, for they feared some of Jesus' disciples might steal the body and then report he had risen from the dead. It is clear that they had heard this from Jesus' teaching and were determined to get rid of him and make sure there would be no further reports about him. But nothing could stop the plan of God to raise up his beloved son, as we shall learn in our next lesson. This remarkable story should cause us to reflect on how evil and wicked men can act because of their pride and envy. 
These men should have had some sense of justice and righteousness, for they claimed to be God's chosen people and prided themselves on their knowledge of God's laws. Yet with all their learning and privilege, they still sought to kill God's Son, pursuing after him with the fury and rage of wild animals. We should also see the incredible love and patience of God. For while evil men were planning to crucify their Savior, God watched on with mysterious silence as his beloved Son was rejected, despised, forsaken, beaten, mocked, spit upon, and left to die in utter abandonment and agony. The crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ is the means by which God was able to execute his judgment against man's sin. Jesus became a man like us in order to represent us and bear away our punishment. God is now perfectly pleased with the sacrifice of his Son and calls us to place our trust in him so we may be forgiven of our sins and receive eternal life. If you want to become a child of God and have your sins washed away, then turn to the Lord Jesus today in faith and accept his sacrifice for your sins. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Matthew chapter 27, verse 54.